It may happen that after we computed the concept set of a formal context, a new object appears and it's necessary to integrate it into what we've done so far. It would be a waste of time to start the computation from scratch. It would be nice to be able to somehow change our concept lattice in those places that are relevant to this object. Incremental algorithms do precisely this. So, let's say that C is uh, this beautiful C, calligraphic C, is the concept set of uh, some formal context K GMI and we've computed it and then a new object arrives let's call it G and we need to add it so we need to add um, a new object G it's new, it's not in our object set, capital G. So we add it with uh, intent uh, G prime to our context K. And uh, this updated context, let's call it KG. Now we want to compute the concept set of this new context. Um, so this is our task, compute um, the concept set C G of the context K G. So how can we do this? Let's look at concepts of C G. So let some concept CD be a concept of this uh, updated context. So it belongs to calligraphic CG. Let's consider a few cases. Well, first of all, um, the extent of this concept C, either it includes G or it doesn't. So the first case is when G is in C. Then if G is in C, there are again two cases. Let's remove G from C. What we get is a, a pair C minus G D. And it may happen that this is a formal concept of the old context. So it belongs to calligraphic C. Or, and this is the second case, G is in C, but C minus G D is not in calligraphic C. It's not a concept of the old context. Why isn't it a concept of this of the old context? This may happen if objects from C, except for G, not only share attributes from D, but they share something else. So there, there's another attribute not shared by G, but shared by all other objects from C. In this case, there's a concept C minus G with the extent C minus G and the intent C minus G prime. And this is a concept of the old context. Why so? Well, for it to be a concept C minus G, double prime must be equal to C minus G. And this is indeed so. There are no other objects in formal context K that have all attributes from C minus G prime because there are no, at no objects in this context, no other objects in this context that have all attributes from D. So all objects that have all attributes from D are among these objects, are among those in C. And D is a subset of C minus G prime. Therefore, this is precisely the set of all objects that have all attributes from this set. And therefore, this is a formal concept of 
the old context. Let's call it the generator of uh, the concept CD. So, every concept CD of the second type has a unique generator in the old context. Okay, and the third case is when G is not in C. Well, in this case, CD is simply a concept of the old context. It belongs to calligraphic C. So we classified all concepts of uh, the new context into one of three types. Now let's check how this helps us compute them. So, um, the general incremental strategy looks like this. Uh, we have the concept sets C, calligraphic C of the old context. We have a new object G with intent G prime and we want to compute uh, calligraphic CG. So we initialize it with the empty set and then we go through all concepts of C, of uh, the old concept set. For A, B in calligraphic C, we do this. First we check if B is a subset of G prime. Well, if B is a subset of G prime, then we are in case one. A B is in fact this concept, C minus G D, and then uh, if we add G to A, we'll get a formal concept of a new context. So this is case one and uh, we add uh, uh, the concept A union G, B to our new concept set. Note that in doing so, we handle all new concepts of the first type, because for each of them, there is a concept C minus GD, which is among the old concepts. And here we go through all old concepts. So every concept of the first type will be generated here, will be added to the set of CG here. Else. So what if B is not a subset of G prime? Then we cannot add G to the extent of this concept because it doesn't have all attributes from B. But then it means that AB is itself a concept of uh, the new context. Because all objects from A still have all attributes from B. There are no other objects in K that have all attributes from B, because AB is an old concept. And the new object G, it also doesn't have B. So this is a concept of a new context, and we add it. And this is actually case 3. And again, we add all concepts of type 3 in this line. But there's more that we have to do here. We compute the intersection of B and G prime. And then we add the concept D prime D to CG. Uh, this is case two. Why is it a formal concept? For it to be a formal concept, uh, D must be equal to D pr double prime. Um, so let's check this. Let's look at objects from D prime. What do they have in common? What attributes do they share? Well, Objects from D prime include all objects from A, so they share at most all attributes from B. So D must be a subset of B. But D prime also includes G, 
So D can include only those attributes from B, D, D double prime must include only those attributes from B that are in G prime. So D double prime equals the intersection of B and G prime, or in other words, D double prime equals D. So this is indeed a formal concept. And we add it to CG, and this is the second case. Why do we handle all concepts of the second type here? Well, because um, every concept of the second type has a unique generator, and sooner or later this generator will be AB. We will consider it in our algorithm. A problem that we have here is that D prime D can be generated several times. So we need some mechanism to avoid duplicates. And this can be done in different ways. So first of all, one can use a smart data structure. to implement the set CG. So that when we add a set, when we add a concept to CG, if this concept is already there, we don't uh, produce a duplicate. The set doesn't change. Here options include a try, this has been done by Noreen and Reino. And this gives a, a theoretically most efficient algorithm known so far. Or one, one can use a hash table. This was done by Robert Godin and his colleagues. Or essentially any other reasonable data structure for implementing sets. A quite different approach is to add uh, D prime D to CJ only when AB is uh, the generator of D prime D. Well, not a generator, the generator, because every concept has a unique generator. So this is, so we add D prime D only if a B is uh, its unique generator. Um, and this is, in formal concept analysis, this approach is known as the algorithm of Norris. And it's pretty efficient in practice. We're going to see how it works in the next video.